And those of you who are at home, if you have any difficulty with hearing me, please put something in the chat the way Anthony did, but also understand that if you write something in the chat that's private to me, that everybody's going to be able to see it because I don't have a way to put the chat on just my computer screen and not on the overhead screen. So if you have any personal questions or anything um, and you don't feel comfortable, just know that even if you put it in private, the three people in this room can also see it. A bolt on the forks of a motorcycle requires a torque of 25 newton meters. If the wrench is 15 centimeters long, what force is required? So we're just using that same equation for torque. Torque equals force times distance. And we're putting in the numbers and solving for F this time. Um, and I'm just going to put the answer up here while I go to the office real quick. I said to you on Friday that I would bring in a torque wrench. I forgot it on Friday. See how it comes in a real fancy box because these things are so such precision instruments. We don't want them being banged around inside the toolbox in the garage. So what I have here is a little wrench that has little, uh, it turns on the side here so I can set the torque. I don't know how well you can see that, but I can set the torque to whatever value I want. I need glasses though, so I can't see anything. Hold on. So just like a regular socket ratchet that you guys might use in the garage, this one's special. Um, I have it set right now to seven Newton meters. It's actually set at 7.3 Newton meters. That's how precision something on one of my bicycles has to be. And then if we tighten down a bolt, which this is going to take a while because it's already it's still just starting the bolt right now. So give me a moment here. You can hear the ratchet working like a normal ratchet. Once we get down to where it would be tightened down, like on these motorcycle forks in question number 20. Now, if we listen, we might hear a click. You hear that little click? That tells me that I just got to the tightening of 7.3 Newton meters. And so in this, if that tightness of this bolt needed to be exactly that value so that it doesn't like, you know, you figure like a pair of motorcycle forks, the actual tubes that they're, that they're uh, you know, are using are maybe triple the thickness of an aluminum can. And so part of the engineering is the strength comes in the shape, but we also need to make sure that when we clamp it on to something that we don't crush it like an aluminum can. So that's why they use torque. So that's what's going on there in question number 20. You're all excited. Question number 20, in fact, you can kind of see a picture of a wrench there on number 22. Question number 21, an aluminum can crusher consists of a lever attached to the crusher as shown. If a person applies here at the end of a lever that is a length of 0.3 meters, what force, uh, oh, I'm sorry, let's, I didn't read that correctly. So this distance here is 0.3 meters. We want to crush the can, which is at a distance from the pivot of 0.1 meters. And you guys might notice that this question reminds us a lot of what we did back in chapter seven. When we were, was it chapter seven? It wasn't chapter seven, chapter 10 or 11. When we were covering simple machines, we looked at some levers like this. Basically, torque is using leverage. So what we did to solve this one in class is we made a net torque equation. Just like we make net force equations, we have a net torque equation. And that's what I was starting to do on the next homework assignment um, that I got started on. So just know that this isn't going away. We have the torque caused by the hand on the end of the lever. And then we have the torque that is crushing the can. And those two things are working against each other because the can 
and is pushing on the lever this way, and the hand is pulling the opposite way. So that's why we have opposite signs in the torque equation. Zero equals F times R minus F times R. And I promise you on your chapter test, I'm going to give you one of these and keep it kind of simple um, where you have two forces working against each other. Probably look more like what I was starting to do in the homework assignment. Uh, so zero equals 50 Newtons times its distance away, which is 0.3. And then the force on the can times its distance away, which is 0.1. Can solve for F. 150. Last question, number 22, the valve on a water meter is about two centimeters long. I don't know if you've ever tried to turn something like on a gas meter or a water meter. Most people probably have never looked at the stuff on their house, but these things are insanely hard to turn. And then they're also hard to get to. So a lot of times you have these really big long handled wrenches that you use in order to turn the, the little uh, valve that's there. Um, and you should know how to do this because it's a safety thing. In case there's an earthquake, you want to be able to turn off your water and your gas so that you don't burn your house down and also waste a whole bunch of water. Um, so what we got going on here is the person is going to exert a force on the end of the wrench. I was just trying to see how I want to name this. The force of the, we'll just stay with the force of the hand because you're going to be using your hand to push on that. And then the valve itself doesn't want to budge. So we'll call this the force of the valve. And the reason why this is a net torque problem is because we're trying to get this thing to spin, trying to spin in a circle. The distance, the length of this valve part here is only two centimeters long. So 0 0.02 meters. And then the distance from where it's spinning out to where the hand is exerting a force is a distance of 0.25 meters. Okay, so that's what's going on in this one. I still think that's kind of confusing. I wouldn't give this as a test question because it's hard to figure out that this is a net torque problem by just looking at the problem that's there. Torque caused by the hand minus the torque caused by the valve that's trying to prevent it from spinning. Zero equals F times R minus F times R. Zero equals 100 times 0.25 minus force times 0.02. And then we solve for force. I know there's some people, probably not in this room right now, but there's some people maybe at home that might have difficulty with solving the math of this problem. So let me just walk through these steps here real quick because we're not in a hurry. We don't have that much notes for today. You're going to start by multiplying 100 times 0.25 and get 25. And then this is 0.02 times F equals zero. Your next step is how about if you add this to the other side? I know that people sitting here right now already know how to do this, but that's okay. It's good practice for us. And then divide both sides by 0.02. And I guess I'll have that answer on the next slide. F comes out to equal 1,250. And of course, if you have a fancy calculator, it will do that for you. Any questions on the homework? All right. No. There, that looks just like the homework I was starting to do. Okay, now, uh, those of you at home, just keep typing, keep or writing, you guys in the classroom. Um, Wednesday, there is a lab scheduled to post to you. My guess is that every day that we're together, you guys will have enough time after we do the lecture that if you want to do the lab in class, you can. That way you wouldn't have to do it at home. Yeah, so when the lab comes out on Wednesday, uh, sometimes the two of you get on stuff right away. You usually kind of wait a little while anyway. But if you want to just hold off on that lab, because let's see, we'd meet again on Monday. Let me look 
at, when we're done and make sure that it's something that we can easily replicate. And it's got to be because I made it so that you can do it at home. So if you guys would like to wait till Monday to do that lab, you can do it in class and probably do the procedure and do the write up and get it all done right then in class. So I need to look at the notes to make sure the notes aren't too long and then uh, that the lab supplies would be easy. And then, yeah, I think we can do all that. And everybody at home is stuck. And those of you who are set up for group B, uh, same thing. Um, when I assign the lab on Wednesday, probably Thursday will give you the opportunity that you could start working on the lab in class. Maybe finish it. Kind of ironic that the two of you who probably argued more than anybody uh, in last year's class ended up in the same small group. Maybe, maybe the universe did it on purpose in order for you two to get along. <laughs> well, you chose that, right? You might choose next time to sit more over here anyway, just because of the fact that then I don't have my back to you all the time, but. It's, if it's okay with you, it's okay with me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you never know. I'll just go to the other part of it. Some, you know, they don't they make movies about that where like two people who don't get along end up on a deserted island together. And, you know, just to kind of show that, people, that any two people can get along if they want to get along. Okay. Um, Example one here, we have a meter stick. Now we know that if you're going to balance a meter stick, please don't write down the stuff that you see in red right now. But if you're going to balance a meter stick, that you would put the fulcrum right here. Without all of this stuff, you would put the fulcrum right here and you could probably get that meter stick to stay balanced kind of, sort of, right? So we understand that, that if you hold it from its center of mass, that's where it balances from. Well, what we're going to do instead here is put the fulcrum off at the 25 centimeter mark. And by the way, if you guys are following along on the slides online, I just, I really slowly developed this over like a series of like four or five slides. But this is at the 25 centimeter mark on the meter stick. Okay. So what we know about the 25 centimeter mark is that it is a distance of 25 centimeters from the center of mass of the meter stick. And that it's also 25 centimeters from the end of the meter stick. That means that the distances that we're using for our net torque are 25 centimeters to where the mass is, and then also 25 centimeters to where the the meter stick center of mass is. And if this thing is balancing, then what I can say is the torque caused by the meter stick itself, we put that as Fg, ms is its weight, and the torque caused by the mass, Fg, m, that those two torques have to cancel each other out. And so we make a net torque equation. And it's important that you can do this because if I'm going to make a test question for you, this is more likely what it's going to look like. These aren't too difficult. So the torque caused by the meter stick itself minus the torque caused by the mass. If it's balancing, the net torque cancels out. And then just like I did on the last two questions in the homework assignment, F times R times F times R. Now, maybe for this first time through, I'll actually put the subscripts in here. But when you're doing your homework assignment and your test, don't bother. I can tell based on the fact they're directly below the torques what they belong to. And I can also tell based on the numbers that you put in. So we want to know. So the meter stick has a mass of 100 grams. So uh, mass equals 0.1 kilograms, which then means that the Fg equals 
one newton, right? We multiply the mass, the kilograms times gravity to get the, the weight in newtons. So one newton times its distance away, which is 0.25 meters minus FGM times its distance away, which is also 0.25 meters. Come on. And that's actually pretty easy math because the FGM has to come out to be the same value as the weight of the meter stick. In other words, if you balance the meter stick at exactly one quarter of the distance, then the exact same mass will hang from its end as what the meter stick weighs on its own. For those of you signed up for AP physics next year, which is why I'm even doing a circular motion chapter, because this is the hardest topic in all of AP physics, you actually have a lab in uh, in this chapter where you use this to solve for what the weight of the meter stick is. So we put a like a 20 gram mass on this side and we try to find that spot where it balances and once it balances, we then solve this equation to solve for what the, the weight of the meter stick is. So just kind of gives you a little bit of an advantage over people coming from AP chemistry. And like I said, if you see all of this stuff with like the arrows on there, if you follow the slides, you're going to see where I've explained this out in pretty good detail, and hopefully that helps you uh, make sense of it. Example two. And this is also the last example for today, and it gets a little bit harder. So are you guys happy to be back? I know Hunter's happy to be back. You guys must be happy too since you signed up to do it. I'm happy that you guys are back. I didn't mind distance learning, but I think that if we want next year to start out normal, that this is a good stepping stone, just having us come back for hybrid. And I want next year to be normal. What's that? Yeah. I don't, you know, and it, part of what we'll call normal if uh, if next year there are some people who are suffering social phobia or health issues and have to stay on distance learning, but school goes back to normal hours, normal days. Everybody's supposed to be here other than those people that have the special circumstance. I wouldn't mind still Zooming. It'd be okay with me to, to just have the Zoom running while we do our notes. You didn't want to? So why'd you choose to? Dad made you? Yeah. Tired of you being in the house? Yeah. And, you know, I think that there's not so much with my older students. You count for this just a little bit, but not much. With my sophomores, there's a lot of people who need to come back because they can't handle being at home and, and staying motivated and doing their work. Um, and I think there's a few in the group B. Yeah, you, you've done really well. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's true. But you, 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 you would definitely be what I would call a, a distance learning success. You've done a very good job this year, no question about it. And Grace, you've also done very well this year. You've kind of gone back and forth. When you've tried, you've done well, and then you've gone through times where I wouldn't hear from you for a week or two, and then you come back and. So, and there's some people in group B that definitely need to come back. 
So, and they are. So, but and then the, then the sophomores because they're just too young to to be able to handle it. Right. Exactly. All right. So here's what we got going on. I think everybody can inherently understand this. Uh, on Thursday, I will set up a couple of these here in the front of the room so that we can make sure that we can recognize it. Uh, you have masses. This we'll call this one FG1. And we'll call this one FG2. And that's not the only weights that are present. We also have the meter stick itself also has weight. FG, I'm going to still abbreviate that as F, uh, FGMS. And now what I want to draw on here is, like I said, what's on the slides. But I don't want you to put this on top of your picture because then when you go to study this, it's going to make it confusing. What's happening is kind of like a teeter-totter is these two forces are causing the meter stick to want to fall clockwise and this force is trying to prevent it from falling clockwise and with it it's teetering right so that's why we call it a teeter-totter or a seesaw and it's really a net torque problem is that these torques um have to cancel each other out and i don't know now that i put those green arrows on there it doesn't really bother me that they're there i just will say this on an ap test they don't want to see it they only want to see the blue ones representing the forces. There is no lab due this Wednesday. The lab is being assigned to you on Wednesday. So nothing is due on Wednesday. I haven't assigned it yet. I'm pretty sure. I should probably make sure before I say that. Yeah, I don't assign the lab until Wednesday and it's due on the 14th. Okay, so now net torque equation. The two forces on the right hand side want our meter stick to fall clockwise. So this is the torque caused by the meter stick, plus also the torque caused by mass two. They want the meter stick to fall clockwise. Meanwhile, mass one wants to make the meter stick fall the other way. So I'm going to make it a negative torque caused by mass one. Now, I probably should be honest when I said earlier that you'd have a question like example one, probably not. I'll probably give you a question like example two, because to me, this feels more like regular physics worthy. AP physics would even add another force on top of this. They'll put something over here holding this up. We won't do that. We'll just keep it at this many forces here. Um, and you can still handle it. Still works out the same. Try to figure out who tries to make it spin clockwise versus who tries to make it spin counterclockwise. Okay, no problem. When you guys are sitting at home and your teacher's zooming and all of a sudden your teacher doesn't say anything for a moment and then answers something on the chat, it's usually private. Elias put it to everybody, but does it seem kind of weird that all of a sudden the teacher just starts talking about something random? Yeah. yeah. It was weird to get used to that when I'd have to I'd read something and there'd be something completely random. Like if Bailey had put that privately and it said is the lab due Wednesday, then I have to explain, well, I haven't even assigned it to the lab yet. And I always figure the other students were like, why is he talking about the lab? Well, mm -hmm. people ask things in the chat all the time. All right. So can you see the progression from what we just did on the last example? Uh, all we did is just added another torque into this, and now we just put the numbers in. So if the meter stick has a mass of 100 grams, a reminder to you, 100 grams is one Newton. The distance, I didn't put the distances on here yet. The distance from here to here is 0.2 meters. Can you read that? 0.2 meters. The distance from here to here is also 0.2 meters. And then the one that's going to be really hard for me to draw is the distance from here to here is a distance of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 centimeters or 0.6 meters. And once again, if you follow the slides, you'll see where I explain all of that out in, in a bunch of steps. Okay, so F times R, we take the weight of the meter stick times its distance to where the fulcrum is at. For FG2, we take the weight of FG2, which they didn't give us, 
It said, what is the mass of two? And its distance away, which is 0.6 meters. And then FT1 is a thousand grams. A thousand grams is 10 newtons. I'm always so nervous, especially since I didn't get to actually teach you in person how to convert between grams, kilograms, and newtons. To remind you that a thousand grams is one kilogram, and one kilogram is 10 newtons. So hopefully you can remember those steps because if you don't, they won't cost you much on your test, but it's just one of those things that we shouldn't get wrong. And the distance to mass one is also 0.3 meters. And now we've got to go through and solve for FG2. So in a series of steps, one times 0.2 is 0.2 plus Fg times 0.6 minus 10 times 0.2 is 2 equals 0. Subtract this to the other side. Add this to the other side. Uh, that comes out to be 1.8 equals 0.6 times Fg2. Divide both sides by 0.6. Fg2 equals three, three newtons, or 300 grams. And I don't care what you put as your final answer if you leave it in newtons or change it to kilograms or change it to grams. What did I do on the slides? Hey, look at that. All of these different things that I talk it out as I go through the progression of the slides. That is it, chapter seven, or chapter circular motion, homework number seven A, questions number 23 and 24. The three of you easily can finish this in class today if you'd like. Yes, I will go back a slide. That is somebody who has worked very hard during distance learning too, is Lori. You guys have probably, you probably have heard me talk to her quite a few times during the Zooms because she's always very attentive, always does her homework, has done a, a great job. And she said hi to you. Yeah. Super homework, buddy. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go back to this one. Yeah, might as well. Um, but like I said, I uh, I wish I had to concentrate on my. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this truthfully to you. I believe that the reason why we're doing hybrid is because it's just like if you're in a sport, a team sport where your team is losing. It's, woo, I'm like, I knew that's not gonna stay. When you're it's towards the end of the season. Your team is, has, has a losing record, and so you start putting in like your sophomores and juniors all the time to get them ready for the next season, right? That's how this year is, is that we are here practicing so that next year we can hit the ground on a roll. So uh, that's why I've got a chemistry lab going today is because when the notes end short like this, I have something for them to do so they go, yeah, I like chemistry. I'm going to take AP chemistry next year. Well, I should do the same thing with you guys. So starting next time, all of the labs that are assigned on the calendar here. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording.